Hey, this is Mr. Heinrich with another AP Classroom FRQ, and this is for AP Physics 2. This is Unit 2, and this is FRQ 1. We've got five parts to get through, so let's get into it. We have this cycle A of gas that's being taken from state 1 all the way back to state 1 in this clockwise fashion, and then we have a cycle B. And it looks very similar, however, this time the cycle is going in a counterclockwise fashion. So up to state four first, then to three, two, and then back to one. And the first question they have for us is, describe the difference, if any, in the network done on each sample of gas as it is taken through the cycle shown above. Explain how the location of the states on the graph and the direction of the processes in each cycle can be used to arrive at your answer. So let's get to the heart of this question. We want to look at the network done on. On is the key word here, each sample of gas. I want to remind you, looking back at these cycles, let's start with cycle A. When is work being done on the gas by the environment? Well, it's right here. It's right when the volume is being compressed from some bigger amount of volume to some lesser amount of volume. That's when there must be some external force from the environment that's pushing on, let's say it's an enclosed gas and there's a piston that can, uh, can push on this gas, right? As that piston is being compressed from volume H to volume L for the gas, there must be an external force happening, right? And similarly, there must be a work done on the gas from state 4 to state 3 for cycle B here, right? because again, our volume is being compressed by some outside force. So in which case is the work done on the gas greater? In cycle A, right here, or in cycle B, right here? And the answer is right here, right? Because work is equal to the product of pressure and volume. So if you just look at this location to this location, I'm not talking about the whole cycle, you have to look at the entire area where I'm dragging my fingers right now. That entire area is greater for cycle B than for cycle A right here. Again, zeroing in on the work done on the gas. So we would write a tidy response and what would we say? Well, I guess we'd say in cycle B, this is part A, in cycle B, There is more work done on the gas we'll say from uh, state 4 to 3 because the area under the curve and we want to remind the reader that we know what that means. What is the area under the curve? Well, that's none other than work, right? Is greater than the area under the curve. And we don't have to state work again here. They understand that we know Let's make sure this is all sounding coherent. In cycle B, there is more work done on the gas from state four to three because the area under the curve work is greater than the area under the curve for cycle A from state, uh, what was their state from? Work was done on the gas in cycle A from state one to two. Again, it was that that was that leftward motion for our cycle, right? Or that leftward motion for the, the state change. All right, that's part A. Let's look at part B. Now, I like part B because it actually wants us to quantify kind of what we just explained, and it further proves the point we're making. So for each cycle, let me zero in here. For each cycle, write an equation for the network done on the gas in terms of the values given in the graphs and physical constants as appropriate. Let's remind ourselves what network is equal to 
for these enclosed gas situations. We have just the general idea that work net is equal to a negative P times delta V, and that's there by convention. So when work is done on the gas, this delta V, I want to remind you that this delta V actually comes out to be negative because we're compressing the piston and therefore our delta V reduces, becomes negative. So you have a negative times a negative and you end up with a positive work done. Because what does that even mean, a positive work? Well, the ideas of work and heat serve to do something. What do they serve to do? Change the internal energy of a system, right? So I would say here that, and this is just a reminder, right? So if we're increasing the work net, meaning we end up with a positive work net because work is done on the gas, doesn't that increase the internal energy of our system or the gas? So again, that's why that negative is there. It's just part of the convention and it, wor it works out pretty well. So getting to the point of this question, let's go to cycle A and then cycle B and then see what's what. Let's find the network done in cycle A. So I'm going to write as I'm reading some things to you from this graph. Right here and right here the work is done. I want to remind you that from 2 to 3 and from 4 to 1 there is no change in volume from 2 to 3 or from 4 to 1. And if you have no change in volume that's called an isovolumetric reaction. By definition if there's no change in volume there is no work. Delta V is 0 then work is zero according to that equation I was just showing you. So we just need to focus on the work net done, and this is again for cycle A, from one to two. Well, what's my pressure? It's PL. Don't forget to put that negative down though. It's a negative times PL times my change in volume. Now my second volume is VL. My initial volume is VH. So in this case, it would be VL minus VH, all right? And then we'd have plus, because we've got to add all the work together. We're talking about work net, this work. Now we're at a pressure, pH, but don't forget to put negative times pH times, now in this case, it'd be VH minus VL, correct? All right, and just to show you what I got, that's what I got. Let's look at the work net done by B, well, in cycle B, and it's exactly the opposite cycle, right? So we're going to end up with an opposite type equation. And here, reminding you from 1 to 4 and from 3 to 2, no work is done. We go up in pressure in our gas, and then the volume changes. So let's say negative, because that's part of the equation, times pH times VL minus VH. Remember, we're arriving at VL from VH plus negative PL times VH minus VL, right? And there's my equation. And that's all they asked for was a correct work net equation. If you go through the process here of working out the minuses, and what I did is I actually factored out a negative here, making that positive, right? So I would have VH minus VL. That way I'd have two VH minus VLs. You, act, you actually get in this one, let's see, if I factor out that negative, I would end up with a positive here, right? I would have a negative pH, because that's negative there, plus PL times the quantity VH minus VL. And for this one, what would happen is I would once again, try to get a VH minus VL to have a commonality with this term here. And you'd end up with a positive pH. And you'd have your negative PL here. So you'd have a pH minus a PL times a VH minus a VL, if you followed through with all the mathematics there. Again, this is not necessary to answer B, but I want to show you, don't we have a positive answer here for our work net done in uh, cycle B, meaning that we've increased the internal energy of the system, meaning that there was more work done as a cycle for B versus A. If you look at this, you end up with a negative answer here, right? Because pH is a greater pressure than PL. This is a negative times this positive. You end up getting a negative 
work for that cycle. I think that's pretty interesting because it coincides well with part A. Okay, here's C. The graph below shows the four states involved in the two processes. On the graph, draw a new complete cycle, which may or may not include any of the four states, so we can be creative how we draw it, in which the magnitude of the work done on the gas is greater than that in either of the original cycles. Okay, and there's a number of ways to draw this. Really what we want to see is that the work done on the gas, which was like that leftward motion, right, it would be a, a greater P times delta V, or it could even be a delta P. You could even change the pressure and the volume simultaneously. But you want to make sure that as you move this direction that you're ending up with a greater area under the curve, right? And that's the heart of it. So looking at C with me, if I was going to draw this, part C, and quickly getting their landmarks, we have a VL and a VH, right? And we have a PL and a PH, and it's good to draw the landmarks they already had so they can understand what new um, pressures or volumes that you're attempting to create, right? So this is their dotted one, and they're not even telling us what direction the cycle has to go clockwise or counterclockwise, right? So it's all up to you. So what I would do is I would just uh, make this state one, and um, this could be state two, and this could be state three. Actually, I'll hold off on making that state three. I think what I'll do is I'll just take us up higher, right? Why don't we just go to a higher location? So I would go this way, this way, this way, and then finally this way. So if you wanted, I suppose you could um, make this the new state for, uh, I don't know how you want to denote that uh, new for, <laughs> I don't know, but you could put three here and you could put new three, but the point to be made is the one that I already said. This area that I just hashed out is a greater area now and therefore more work is done on the gas in that segment than in either of the other two cycles A or B that we were looking at. Okay, getting on to D, getting on to D. So we still have two more parts, let's keep it rolling. In which of the four labeled states is the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules greatest? Briefly explain your answer, referring to the location of the state on the pressure volume graph. So they want us to use that dotted graph that we were just looking at. And in which state is the kinetic energy greatest is what they're asking. And I want to remind you of a couple things. At any one of these locations, it's like you're looking at the product of P and V. What is P times V equal to? P times V from your ideal gas law is equal to lowercase n r times t, or it could be uppercase n, the number of molecules, k Boltzmann's constant times t. So whatever you're more comfortable with, but PV is equal to nrt or nkt, but the important part, PV is proportional to t. So the higher pressure times volume you have, the greater your temperature at that particular state, right? And remember, temperature is related to kinetic energy, right? The kinetic energy of the molecules are a function of the temperature. So all we have to do is figure out where the pressure times the volume is greatest, and then make a quick argument to say, well, that means that that's where the kinetic energy is greatest, right? And that would be at state four. Isn't this pressure times this volume greater than any of the other pressure times volumes? So let's make our argument. D. I would say kinetic energy is greatest at state 4, or you could say in state 4. And we would say uh, PV 
is proportional to t. That should be fine with them right there. Since p times v is greatest, in state four, the temperature is greatest also or you can say furthermore right also ke is equal to three halves k t that's one of those equations that's important to remember. But, you know, you have your equation sheet. You don't need to memorize them. But it's good to know them pretty well so you know what to look for at the right time. Uh, right? So right here we can see a higher temperature would yield a higher kinetic energy. A uh, greater T would yield a greater running out of room a greater ke done nail in the coffin right okay let's go on to party e. party e is another quick argument just like that one let's look at part e in terms of forces and or impulse Briefly explain how the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a, any gas is related to the pressure of that gas. How is the kinetic energy related to the pressure and by way of force or impulse, right? So how is kinetic energy related to pressure? So I'll even say your Ke versus P. And this is part E. So it's important to get to the meat of the question, understand what it's actually asking you. And that's what it's asking you by way of, just a quick brainstorm here, by way of force or impulse. And I think I'll use force, but you could use either. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my claim. What could we say here? If we have a greater Ke or a lesser Ke, what does that do to the pressure? Does it make it greater or less? Well. It's kind of a common sense idea. If your molecules have a higher kinetic energy, they have a higher velocity, they're hitting the containers with a faster speed, that's a bigger force, right? And therefore, that's a bigger pressure. So that, that's just a quick thought, and that's kind of how we're approaching this, but we'll make it more formal than that. So we'll say here, a greater Ke... of the molecules generates a greater pressure. There's my claim. Higher Ke means a higher molecule velocity, molecular velocity, molecular, there we go, velocity, All right? And I don't think you need to put here Ke equals one half mv squared, but if you want to, you could, right? Higher molec velocity. What does that mean? Generate. What do higher molecules going, higher velocity of your molecules do? They generate a greater force. And before I just give it away, because this is an important skill that you need to get down, right? How do you connect the dots here? What is the equation that connects this idea of a greater velocity to a greater force? you might be thinking F delta T equals M delta V. 
and that's absolutely correct. And that's why I said you could use force or impulse because this thing is, this product of force and time is impulse or you could just look at the force there. It's important to understand that these two ideas, mass and the delta T of the collision, uh, those are constant, right? What we're talking about is an increased velocity change, right? Higher velocity to begin with and exiting the collision is going to increase that force, right? So I'm going to put that in parentheses to prove my point. And finally, we're not done because they want us to connect what and what? Kinetic energy and pressure. We'll say a greater force a greater force for a given container area is a greater pressure we say P is equal to F over A where that's a constant, but as that increases, that increases. Just like that. And we made our connection between kinetic energy and pressure. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope that helps. Have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe. And let me know if you want other videos. Thanks.